dear colleagues, it's a great pleasure to me see you at the Prague Conference on Political Economy. And I would like to thank Josef Schima and all of us for this conference. At least I think it's very interesting conversation. Uh, my name is Pavel Usanov. I am from St. Petersburg. I am director of Hayek Institute and also I have a research position in European University in St. Petersburg. Uh, the title of my current presentation is Murray Rothbard as a historian of economic thought. I think you agree with me that then you studying books and articles by Murray Rothbard, you always think that there is result not only one person, but a few. Because Mario Rothbard was interested in a few fields in economics, he has, a, I think, one of the great book, uh, Man, Economy and State, in sociology, politics, and in history of ideas. But today I will tell you about, I think, the main contribution of Murray Rothbard in social science. Uh, and I think it's a more important book for today social science than Man, Economy and State, Market and Power, and maybe especially Ethics uh, of Liberty. Because for me, history of economic ideas is the best antidote against ignorance in social science. And one of the main problem of our education, I think it's uh, ignorance of the history of economic science, the homogeneous of this knowledge, knowledge in economics without any alternatives. <clears throat> and I think this uh, work uh, have a low estimation and we need to change our view of this excellent uh, book by Murray Rothbard. Uh, I think you know that it was a result of long life by Murray Rothbard because this book was published after his death uh, in 1995 and this is two volume book. I think it's uh, one thousand book, uh, one thousand page book, they're big volume. And, and I would like to ask you, maybe it will be interesting for me, not only for uh, me, uh, could you raise your hand if you uh, have read this book almost? Oh, excellent. <laughs> it's very good. Uh, okay, maybe you know all, oh, maybe I will tell you something that you didn't know. Uh, let, me t let me begin this one story. Uh, this is a story from this masterpiece by Murray Rothbard. Uh, once upon a time in Switzerland, in the capital Bern, uh, was an international conference on political economy. And two, I think, famous economists of 19th century was at this conference. Uh, at the left, you can see the picture of uh, Gustav Schmoller, member of Historian School of Economics, and at the right, Wilfredo Paretta, the member of Lasagna School and uh, the member of Abstract Economic Theory. Uh, the title of the presentation by Paretta was Natural Economic Law. And after this presentation, Schmoller asked uh, Paretta, said to him, there is no such thing like universal natural economic law just empirical investigations. Pareto says nothing, but after presentation, we talk, talked, uh, they talked about uh, laser time. And uh, Pareto asked Schmoller, do you know, well, know Bern? Yes, of course, I know this city very well. Maybe you know uh, the good restaurant with free lunch. Uh, and I now have to pay. Uh, Schmoller looked down to the parrot uh, and say, of course, in Bern you can find many cheap restaurants with bad food, but of course no free lunches. 
and Pareto said that maybe uh, we have a natural economic law. If we have a price of the food in every restaurant, maybe it's an uh, example of natural law of economics. And uh, I think uh, when we're studying economics, history of economic ideas and these stories, this uh, the story from uh, Ludwig von Mises at, this, at his seminar, but you can find this story in the uh, second volume of Murray Rothbard book. Uh, second volume is about classical economics, about 19th century. Uh, today in every textbook we can, can find uh, the law that we can't have free lunch for the goods without uh, limits of quantity. If you, if you have this limitation, we will have a price. It's universal law. It's a logic of action and logic of the market. And this is the foundation for uh, understanding economic process because without this universal law, we can't explain empirical world. This is like a glass for uh, investigation. Uh, Karl Menger, the founder father of Austrian economics, said in his book, Investigation in the Social Science, that we have a three part of economic science. This is a very important part for uh, get good, uh, for, for having good education and uh, scientific projects. It's not microeconomics, microeconomics, and econometrics. Uh, Menger thought that is economic theory, economic history, and history of economic ideas. This is the three roots or foundation for sound economic science. And if you compare this idea with activity of Murray Rothbard, I think you will agree that uh, Murray Rothbard um, made uh, very exciting contribution to all these three parts of economic science. In his 25 books and 1,000 articles, for example, this, you can find economic theory, economic history, and history of economic thought. This is just a picture of his book about economic history. Uh, and I think it's a very important contrib contribution of Murray Rothbard because uh, we have, uh, I think, very fruitful uh, scientific project in the book of Mises and Hayek, but we don't have investigation of Mises and Hayek about concrete period of economic history. But in the books of Rothbard, we can find this very interesting uh, periods. The book about panic in the uh, beginning of 19th century, the fourth volume, Conceived in Liberty, and uh, now I saw that uh, Mises Institute have a plan to publish f five volume. Uh, very interesting and exciting book about the progressive era, published, uh, uh, I think, last year. And uh, Randall mentioned this uh, book in uh, his presentation uh, yesterday. And I think Magnum Opus in the, his historical studies, America's uh, Great Depression. Uh, there's a very solid book about the facts of Great Depression and Roosevelt's uh, New Deal. Uh, but it, this is only the part of his uh, contribution. Uh, the second part is a two-volume book, An Austrian Perspective of the History of Economic Thought. I think you know that in the beginning of this project, it was anti-Hellbronner book. Very popular vision of the history of economic ideas uh, was published in the book Heilbronner, Worldly Philosopher. What is this? What is a short overview of uh, this vision of history of economic ideas? Economics began with Adam Smith. 
Adam Smith looks like a superhuman. Uh, you don't need to spend the time for studying what it was before Adam Smith. You need to know only a few figures like Smith, Ricardo, Mill, Marx, Keynes, somewhere else, and modern mainstream economics. Uh, this is a way for, I think, most uh, historians in economic thought, especially in uh, the economic departments. Uh, I think it's uh, very comfortable uh, to make this view because you don't have a contradiction with your textbooks on micro and macro, especially in econometrics. Uh, because if you will have another information about this um, approach, uh, you can change your mind and to move in another direction. And this is the first idea because uh, the friend of Murray Rothbard, Marx Cosen, uh, entrepreneur and uh, economist, asked him to write this short uh, introduction to the history of economic short introduction, but Ante Hale Bronner, maybe uh, 200 or 300 pictures uh, with a pretty smile, Adam Smith, David Ricardo, Mill, maybe uh, Karl Menger and another. But uh, it's not the case about uh, Murray Rothbard because uh, his view of economic history, history of economic idea, was absolutely uh, different. Uh, he thought that we need uh, to investigate not so famous figures. I think it's look like uh, War and Peace by Tolstoy, but in the history of economic ideas. More than 500 persons, not only famous, Small, uh, famous, not so famous figures. It's uh, also uh, important for Murray Rothbard. And as a result of this project, Murray Rothbard tried to write a three volume book. But at uh, the 1995, in the year where he died, uh, we had only two volumes of this book. First volume is about history of economic thought before Adam Smith, and uh, the second about classical economics. We don't have a third volume, but uh, it will be very interesting because the 20th century is a very uh, fruitful period for economic uh, reasoning. What we, but we don't have this complete uh, walk. If you open first page of this great book, you can find next words. This book dedicated to the, my mentors, Ludwig van Mises and Joseph Dorfman. And I think it's very important to understand who is Mr. Dorfman, because uh, I think every, everybody knows who is Ludwig van Mises. And I just uh, need to mention that in the beginning of this book, Rothbard said that the special view of his uh, investigation is a Misesian view. Uh, and I think from the period of Rothbard writings and to the present day, uh, we don't have a substitute. It's a uni unique book about history of economic thought in the Austrian style from the Greeks to the beginning on 20th century. It, it is very important. And uh, I think you understand what was uh, the subject of um, analyze, analyzing. What is the uh, best period in economic theory in the view of Murray Rothbard? It's uh, human action and uh, the period after World War II. And this book was published. But uh, the second important root of his book is uh, Economic Mind in American Civilization. And I think it's look like an uh, example for Rothbard 
three volume book because uh, fourth and five volume of this book is about period after World War I and before uh, 1933. Uh, Only 15 years is a period for investigation of Dorfman. It's something amazing. Now, if you are talking about the history of economic thought in the lecture in the universities, maybe you have uh, only a few hours for uh, explaining all periods uh, in the history of uh, economic ideas. But in this book you have, uh, I think, 1,000 pictures about this very, very short period, but very important period in economic history of United States. But it was a very important period not only for history, but the, the history of uh, ideas. What about short uh, overview of these two uh, volumes? Uh, in the first volume you can find 17 chapters and I uh, mark read uh, the chapters that I think is uh, most important for uh, new scientific uh, projects. Uh, it's the first philosopher economist, the Greeks, because in, uh, in this period was created two paradigm uh, for the history of ideas. Plato paradigms of the state and Aristotle paradigm of the exchange and uh, the market. Uh, it's very important, I think, uh, that uh, the theory of uh, entrepreneurship was created before uh, Adam Smith, Wealth of Nation, in the book of Richard Cantillon. And this is the very important chapter of this two volume uh, book. And uh, also, I need to mark the 16, 16th um, chapter about celebrated Adam Smith. Uh, as you know, Murray Rothbard was not a fan of Adam Smith, uh, and for him, Wealth of Nation was a uh, step down in the history of economic ideas because he's rejected uh, subjective, uh, sub subjective utility of French liberal tradition. And uh, Robert thought that uh, the Adam Smith was a founding father of the lab labor theory of value. Uh, I think it's uh, all this. Ver uh, it's very important chapter for understanding history of economic ideas. And in the second film, I marked uh, Bentham and John Stuart Mill because there is uh, because this is uh, very important for understanding differences between uh, Max U in our textbooks and human action in the treaty on uh, economics by Mises and uh, by Robert. What is the differences between Homo agents and uh, Homo economicus or Max U in the terms of uh, Diedra McCloskey? Uh, the main idea of the book by Murray Rothbard is that the history of ideas, it's not uh, the linear history. Uh, this is the history of Zig and Zag. We have uh, very uh, fruitful ideas and uh, we have a period of unsound economic uh, theory. And I think it's uh, uh, very important for modern uh, scholar in social science because if you think that the history of ideas is a linear, continuously process, you will think that you, you need to know only current papers and current textbooks. You don't need to study these thick books of 19th century, treatise on economics, but this is not the same economic theory in 19th century and uh, economic theory in the treatise Human Action and uh, the tool of box in the modern textbook. It's a different approach. And uh, if you compare this different approach, you will understand that uh, if you don't have universal theory, 
the theory of uh, natural law in economics, you, then don't, you don't have a comprehensive vision of economic process. And economic theory, a priori, economic theory is a good foundation for this. And economic history is very important. Uh, I say that the history of ideas is the best antidote against ignorance in social science. And uh, this book by Murray Rothbard, I think it's a good example for this uh, antidote. But, but uh, it's not the case about modern education and especially in universities. I would like to quote Deidre McCloskey uh, text, The Secret Sins of Economics, but the name of this um, text is not the, the same, the idea of this quote. I will quote. One graduate program after another in uh, eight, uh, 1970s and 1980s cut the requirement that students become familiar with the economic past. I myself managed for 12 years to fend of the days of the ex execution at the University of Chicago. Now, do you see the pattern? Uh, do you see the pattern? The very month I left the department in disgust. The barbarians inside the gates sent the economic history requirement to the guillotine and signed the, the PhDs in economics from the University of Chicago have joined those in Minnesota, Princeton, and Columbia in ignorance of the economic past. At the same time, almost all American graduate programs, my own Fair and Garbert was proudly among the first to do so, were abandoning the study of the past of the economics itself. People came themselves economists who have never read a page of Adam Smith or Karl Marx. I will add Ludwig van Mises and uh, Philipp von Hayek, my colleague from uh, one very famous university in uh, Russia, in Moscow, said to me that uh, in the Soviet period, students know that Mises and Hayek was crazy, but they know these uh, show names. They uh, know these uh, names of the economists, but today they don't know who is Mises, who is Hayek, who is Rothbard. They know only uh, one direction, only one way. Uh, John Monica Cates. It would be like being an anthropologist who had never heard on Malinowski or an evolution biologist, biologist who had never heard on Darwin. Today we have many economists who had never read no one page on Marx, Smith, uh, and uh, Keynes. And uh, also I would like to uh, say about book by Ario Klemmer, the colleague of uh, McCloskey, speaking on economics, how to get in the conversation, how to be successful in academy, if you want to be economist. Uh, and uh, you will find very, I think, interesting table in this book, the table perception of success. What is the best way to get success in economic science? What is important and what is unimportant? This is the result of Paul, a uh, young uh, scholar in economic science. And what the result? Uh, what is very important for economists, today economists? 65% think that is excellence in math mathematics and moderately important, 20 uh, 32% and th three unimportant. I think this three is uh, Hayek, Mises uh, and Rodman. <laughs> of course, it's a joke, it's a percent of uh, this, <laughs> this result. It's strange. What is the people doing at the economic department? I think uh, they should go to the uh, maybe humanitarian department or another school. What is very important? Being very knowledgeable about the particular field. Okay. Being smart in the sense of being good at a problem solving. Okay. And this is interesting. What is really important for uh, academic career in economics? Ability to make connection with prominent professor. It's a very important feature to good have relationship with your chief. Uh, it's uh, it's look not like a market process. It's not uh, look like scientific uh, process uh, to find the truth or something else. 
What do you need? You need to be mathematics, uh, you need to have excellence in math mathematics, and you need to have ability to make connection with professors. It's very important. What is not important? You economist, you don't need it. First of all, having a broad knowledge of the economic literature. History of economic idea is something which you need to get the basket. That's all. You need last textbook, you need to know mathematics, and that's all. And what else? It's not important for economists. Having a thorough knowledge of the economy. Who is modern economist? They don't know what is this economy. They don't know the history of economy and the history of ideas, of course. But they know what is mathematics and a good connection with professor, maybe like Piketty. This is, I think, a good example for career in this field because uh, he, ha he has a good relationship with Krugman, Stiglitz, and another very, very famous professor and, uh, in economics. Uh, in, in the end of my presentation, I just want to mention that uh, I published a book uh, in Russian at this moment. Uh, this is the second part of um, Trilogy of Freedom. This is the uh, introduction to these three fields of uh, economy. Uh, the book, this, this, uh, in the English it will be uh, Science of Wealth. This is a uh, uh, I think the seller in uh, Russian uh, bookstores and the second is a uh, uh, history of economic ideas. Uh, I try to explain the history of economic ideas as a part of different struggles between two main ideas, uh, be between two paradigms. Uh, in the books of Peter Bertke you can find this uh, uh, type of investigation to see the history of idea like a struggle between catalytics paradigm uh, this is will be Aristotle uh, Bastia and Hayek the economics is a science of exchange and this is uh, the main idea for the two current approach this is Austrian economics and public choice theory and the different way is an allocation paradigm. You need to compare result of free market with idealistic view what you want, what level of GDP you want, how many people uh, have to be a middleman. Is a middleman is a good man? What is ethics? From the Plato through the 19th century Marxism and another approach uh, in the 20th century it's uh, Keynes and modern economic theory. I think that the correct correct name for uh, today's textbooks in economics in the university is uh, uh, allocation paradigm. We need to compare our reality to the ideal view and uh, as a result I would like to say that for me, I hope for you too, history of ideas is the best antidote against ignorance in social science and the book of Murray Rothbard is a good alternative for understanding economic theory. Thank you. One sentence, one sentence I think. Uh, <laughs> of course, but it's not only one that's important. Yeah. I think you agree that this is also important for libertarian yeah. to know literature, to know history, to know economics. I just like to know who the respondents to this survey. Are you a clamor? No, no. I mean, the, the, who did they ask? Students? No, 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 no. This is a young uh, PhD. The, the people uh, undergraduate. Oh, okay. No, no, no. The, yes, yes. Assistant professor, yes, yes, I think it's an uh, assistant professor, but this is not a student. As far as I know, it's a uh, survey from the job market. 
job market. Oh, it's like the American economic situation yeah. where you have to. What is important, uh, what is important for uh, academic uh, market? I, I read this book and uh, uh, as far as I remember it was the PSA uh, yeah, yeah. surveys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.